Now one of the things you're going to have to know in this course and whenever working with electronics are the engineering prefixes for powers of 10. So it might be a good idea if you printed out this page or copied it down uh, because we're going to use it in some of our examples uh, as we go through this course. Let's look at some examples right now. Let's express the following in engineering notation. So we'll do this one first. So I have 10 times 10 to the fourth ohms. Now the whole concept of engineering notation is that we work in powers of 10 that are multiples of 3. So for example, if you look at 10 to the third, that's a kilo and its symbol is a small k. And then the next power of 10 that we work with is a mega. So that's a 10 to the sixth, then a giga is 10 to the ninth, and a tera is 10 to the twelfth. Conversely, if we get smaller, well, in between here, of course, we have 10 to the zero, which is just unity. But as we get smaller, we go 10 to the minus three, which is a milli, 10 to the minus six, which is a micro, and so on. So what we want to do here is when we have a 10 to the fourth or some power that isn't uh, with a three or a multiple of three as the exponent, then we want to rearrange that so that we can get a multiple of three in there. And for example, in this case, we're going to end up with 10 to the third, and this prefix is a kilo, and we're going to use a small k. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to multiply this out. I'm going to say that 10 times 10 to the fourth ohms is equal to 10 times 10 to the first times 10 to the uh, third ohms and then that is 100 kilo ohms. So what I've done here is I've multiplied 10 times 10 to get 100 and I've replaced this 10 to the power of 3 with a kilo ohm. Let's look at another example. In this case, you'll note that the exponent is already a power of 3, so we have 10 to the minus 3, so I can make a direct conversion here. I'm going to leave that as it is, 0 0.1, and I'm then going to replace times 10 to the negative 3 with a milli, and then put in uh, the sign for amps. Here's another exact example involving seconds. So I have 200 times 10 to the power of minus 7 seconds. And I'm going to look down here and the closest one to 10 to minus 7 is 10 to minus 6. So let's see how I can configure this one. So I'm going to say that this equation here is equal to 250 times 10 to the negative 1 times 10 to the negative 6. So if I have my 10 to the negative 6, then I can use the sign micro to replace 10 to the minus 6. And then I'm going to multiply 250 times 10 to the negative 1, and that is 25. So 250 times 10 to the negative seconds expressed in engineering notation is equal to 250 microseconds. And finally, we'll do one more. We have 1.5 times 10 to the power of 2 volts. So if we look at the closest one to 10 to, uh, to the power of 2, then we have 10 cubed, which is once again a kilo. Worthy of note is that this expression here is currently in scientific notation, but we don't leave it in scientific notation. We want to put it in engineering notation. So we can say that 1.5 times 10 to the power of 2 volts is equal to 0 0.15 kilovolts because what I did was I moved my decimal place one over to the left and if I move it one over to the left in the 1.5, then I am effectively multiplying one, uh, pause that. So what I did here was I moved this decimal place over one to the left. So 1.5 is equal to 0 0.15 times 10. So now I have a times 10 in here, 
which means that I can add the exponents. So I have times 10 times 10 squared, which gives me 10 cubed, and I can replace 10 cubed here with a kilo. So I've done that. I've replaced that with a kilo sign, and I put in V for volts. Another way I can express that is I can also say that if I want to move this decimal place two places to the right to get rid of the 10 squared, then that could also be expressed as 150 volts. So either way is acceptable in this case. It all depends what the other voltages are expressed in the circuit, how I would write that out. So what's the effect of adding resistance? Well, we previously saw this circuit and it did not have a resistor in it. And in that case, the lamp would burn very brightly. But if I put a resistor in the circuit, then what I am going to do is I'm going to limit the amount of current flowing in the circuit. And the lamp will not uh, glow as brightly. So there's some important concepts that we just covered. There's some fundamental relationships here. One is that voltage is defined as the potential difference between two points. Current is defined as the movement of charge. And resistance is defined as the opposition of current. Let's measure resistance. Well, we'll do that in a lab. Here's the problem. Given the above circuit with an unknown value for R1, how do we, we measure its resistance? Well, one way of measuring resistance is using a device called an ohm meter. And in the lab, we're actually going to call some, use something uh, called a multimeter, which is a multifunction meter. It will be an ohm meter, which will measure uh, resistance. It will be a voltmeter, which will re measure voltage. And it will be an ammeter, which will measure current. So we're going to use a multipurpose meter. And in actual fact, this is a multi purpose meter because you can see there's a sign for ohms and there's my volts and here's my amps. So the key thing about measuring a resistance of any device is that you must isolate the component in an unpowered circuit. If you put these leads across a live circuit that has current going through it and you have your meter on resistance then you're going to burn out the meter. Now sometimes we have a short circuit occur in an electronic device. Whether or not it's just a piece of wire that fell uh, on the circuit and shorted things out, or it could have fell across this resistor, and in that case, instead of this being whatever value it is, then the resistance in between there and there would be zero. So one of the things that you should realize is if you do have a short circuit, then the current is going to take the path of least resistance. So if we did some calculations here where we said that the series resistance here is R1 plus the value of R2 plus the value of R3. And for example, if that turned out to be 2K ohms, well, with this piece of wire across these terminals, then the resistance is zero. Conversely, we have an open circuit. If for whatever reason we had a break in the wire here, then the values that we previously measured of 2K ohms for the total of this series uh, resistance circuit would be infinity. And in multi-SIM, if you read infinity, it's typically three dashes across the meter that you're going to read. So here are some important factors concerning the measurement of voltage, current, and resistance. Voltage is a measure of potential difference across a component. And this is what you're going to do in the lab if you haven't already done it. You're measuring voltage across a component. When I want to measure current, then I have to break the circuit and I have to put the measuring device in the path of the flow of charge. In other words, in the current path. And finally, Resistance is a measurement of opposition to current across an isolated component in an unpowered circuit. So that means that whenever you hook up a multimeter in a circuit, then you should set the multimeter to voltage or current 
before you turn on power because if you have it set on resistance and you turn on the power then if this was a real world circuit you would burn out the multimeter. The unit of measurements of these electrical properties that we saw so far voltage is measured in volts and uses a capital V. Current is measured amperes and uses a capital A and resistance is measured in ohms and uses the omega sign. The ohms law has many forms here. We have the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. If I do a little bit of algebra, I can calculate the current and that's equal to voltage divided by resistance. And finally, if I want to find out the resistance, I can divide the voltage by the current. And typically we put this in a little circle and partition it off and that's how you can easily uh, remember these these formulas. So V is equal to IR, I is equal to V divided by R, and finally R is equal to V divided by I. One thing we haven't talked about yet is power. So power is a measure of the rate at which energy is used. And we have another formula there. The basic formula is power is equal to VI. Our units of measurement are the wa are watts and we use a capital W. And we can see power evidence is heat in the lab. Um, you won't see, you won't feel any heat coming off the monitor when you build that circuit that has the filament inside the lamp glowing, but you will see it red. You'll see it glowing. So there is power there. And we can use a device called a watt meter to measure power. And we'll do that in the lab in a later exercise. So resistors are very susceptible to burning out and if there's too much power in the circuit then we're going to burn out the resistor. So not only do we have to say well look I need a 47 ohm resistor but you have to say well what power rating uh, do I need to use as well. Our basic formula is power is equal to VI. But if we don't know the current in the circuit and we just know the voltage, then we can say that power is equal to V squared divided by R. And if we don't know what the voltage is in the circuit, then we can say power is equal to I squared R. So let's look at some examples of calculating uh, the voltage, the current, resistance, and power quantities using correct units. So my first one here is I want to calculate voltage when current and resistance are both known. And I have a problem here, small little problem where I have a 100 ohm resistor with 4 amps of current flowing through it and I want to calculate the voltage across the resistor. The best thing to do is draw a picture so that you can understand the problem you're trying to solve. So I've drawn my resistor, I've labeled the direction of the current and as I said before the potential on the left hand side of this resistor is going to be greater than the potential on the right hand side so I'm going to put a positive sign here and a negative sign there and across that resistor I would measure voltage so what I'm going to do then is say that V is equal to IR I'm given that there's 4 amps so I'll substitute that in there given that there's 100 ohms, so it's a straight multiplication. So the voltage is equal to 400 volts. Our second example here is I want to calculate current when voltage and resistance are both known. How much current flows through a 25 ohm resistor with 10 volts across it? Well, before I show you the answer, why don't you try this? Draw the picture, label it, and then solve for the unknown. And the unknown in this case is current. So here's the answer that I came up with. I drew my picture. I have my resistor here. I've drawn the direction of the current. I put my plus, my minus sign. I put the value of the resistor below uh, the resistor itself. And I put the voltage as measured across the resistor. And this little r in the in the uh, slide should not be there, so it should read I is equal to V divided by R. So I is equal to 10 volts divided by 25 ohms. So I is equal to 0 0.4 amps, 
which is equal to 400 milliamps. So I have put this in my engineering units. I would also be in this case correct of leaving it at 0.4 amps, but for teaching purposes I have changed this so that I have 0.4 uh, and I've multiplied that uh, by 10 to negative 3 so that I can come up with 400 milliamps. Let's look at another example. I want to calculate resistance when voltage and current are both known. And here's our problem statement. So I'd like you to try this one yourself again and then you can go to the next slide to see what the answer is. So I drew my picture once again. Oh, I forgot my plus and negative signs so I guess I'll lose thousands and thousands and thousands of marks there. But I have my resistor and I have the current flowing through the resistor. I have the voltage across it. I want to calculate R so R is equal to the voltage divided by the current. So I have 25 volts divided by 250 milliamps and that comes out to 100 ohms. One thing I would like you to make sure that you know how to do is the math here. 